Would you please put your hands together in a very, very warm Mother's Day welcome from the roundabout for the winner of the Midlands Graduate Tale of the Year. To the winner of the Paddy Power Sponsor, Best Elvis in Winston. And to the winner of the Elvis Idol, Las Vegas in the USA. Please put your hands together and give a rousing welcome to Liam Murphy. Both, you know, an Elvis impersonator um, and an Elvis tribute artist, you know, try to do the same thing. But in my view, an Elvis impersonator um, is trying to be Elvis. Obsession gets to a point where there's something wrong, isn't it really, you know? Um, I think they just had this belief that, you know, they are Elvis, you know, and they want to be Elvis and they want to be around the man. He's like a god. And uh, so everything they do and everything, you know, the way they think they want to be Elvis in Elvis mode all the time. I think that's just too obsessive. It's, it's crazy. Um, well, that with the, the belt and the cape cost me two and a half thousand dollars, I think it was. That was fifteen hundred dollars. That was four hundred dollars. Um, and that was, say, nearly a thousand dollars. And then you have all the other bits and pieces, you know. Well, I have no idea what the attraction was with Liam and Elvis, because none of the other boys are really into Elvis, were they? No, not that I know of. No. Mm. He just mm. he used to do the lip. You know the way Elvis does the lip? <laughs> Even at a young age, he'd be going around doing it. I don't know where it came from, but he yeah. just liked it, and that was yeah, it, you know? Good, yeah. And uh, he used to try and draw his picture and stuff like that, you know. Uh, off the LPs, he'd be tracing the face around and then trying to shave them in and stuff like that, you know. Every time I hear Elvis song, I just say, you don't know is that Liam or is it Elvis, or you know? It sounds very Yeah, I do like, like listening to him. Actually, sometimes I think Liam sings a little bit better. <laughs> you gave me a mountain the The first time I sang a song in front of a crowd was, uh, was at my wedding when I first got married back in 94. Um, the night of the wedding people were saying to me, because you could make a few bob out of that, you know. There was an uncle of mine who said to me, why don't you do it professionally, like, you know. And I was thinking about it and thinking about it and I said, oh, I wouldn't have the nerve to do it, you know. Didn't have the comp confidence at all. And um, I remember even my wife at the time, she said, you should do the singing, you know. You know, because you enjoy doing it, you know, so why don't you do it? And as I said there, I just I didn't have the confidence to get up in front of a crowd, you know. I don't need, I had too many drinks, that's, that's the only reason I got up at the wedding, to sing a song, like, you know. Actually, I put an ad in the buy and sell, you know, Elvis impersonator, you know, <laughs> looking to form a band, you know. So I got a phone call from this drummer, and uh, he said he used to be in an Elvis tribute band, and uh, he said his wife, um, was a manager. The thing about Liam is, the, his biggest asset is his voice. Um, if, you, if you just close your eyes, so you listen, listen to Liam on a CD, his voice is almost the exact image of, uh, of, um, of Elvis Presley. It was while we were forming the band during rehearsals, you know, Cathy, the manager, was saying to me, uh, there's a competition on in Vegas, you know, would you be interested in going over and entering it? So I was a bit reluctant at the time because 
you, you know, when you, when you think about going to Vegas, you think about the types of Elvis and tribute acts that are over there, you know, you say, I have no hope in hell of doing anything over there, you know. So, look, we'll go over anyway, and if we get into the finals, we'll have an angle then to promote the band. And then we got through the first heat, called again, got through to the second heat on the second night, and then on the finals then, um, my name wasn't getting pulled out for third place or second place in here, but uh, never at least I got into the final anyway, I was thinking, you know. And then your man was introducing the winner who had flown 8,000 miles. So I said, geez, that could be me, you know. <laughs> Unless it's somebody here from, from China or somewhere like that, you know. And uh, Which there was. And uh, and they called an Irish man all the way, you know, from Ireland and couldn't believe it. How's it going? I'm sorry. I know course now. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As long as they're Irish courses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so. Yeah, no, is it? See, if people don't, if you don't look serious, people won't take it serious. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, in order to look serious, you need to buy the right jumpsuits, the right jewellery, and the right yeah. wigs, for instance. You know what I mean? Mm. So, I think when we go out and do our show, we're going to try and replicate everything you've done. Yeah down to detail and clothing and hair and you know the way the stage is is, is set up and stuff like that you know because for every professional tribute like that we would be like, we like to think mm. that we're a professional tribute to be some other guy going out in a, in a wonky jumpsuit and yeah. sort of having a laugh and that's what puts the sigma on you know when I was thinking exactly. burger exactly. eating big fat Elvis and but there is there is people out there you know that really do believe he's alive you know there was another Australian guy over there you know he's about 7 foot tall you know a height of him and um, but he called himself Elvis. Yeah. He changed his name by Depot, is that what it is? Yeah. And uh, yeah, and he said, I think when I go back, he said I'll be changing the last name as well. I said, you fruitcake. What I'm trying to do now is is get into all the the, the pubs and stuff like that, you know, um, and try and reappear maybe every eight weeks, you know, so you'd have a regular income. Um, it's not easy because it's a limited market. Um, we're looking around at different sort of venues. We do a lot of sort of clubs and pubs and places like that. The concert halls, as I say, because of the financial constraints, they're kind of dying off now, you know. The best times are around Christmas time, because you're always out Christmas, you know. You could be out three or four nights a week at Christmas, in December especially, you know. But it's tough at the moment. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. If you don't have regular income, you have to take what's coming, you know. And uh, sometimes it could be as low as 300 euros, and then we'd have to split that, you know. So why don't you get 150 euros, you know? It'd be less than minimum wage if you were to, you know, count up all the pennies for the whole year. It'd be less than minimum wage right now. I've got, I've got undressed in more space. <laughs> put on the jumpsuit when you look good and you're going out on stage you know you become a different person you try to be a different person because you're trying to reenact what Elvis done on stage you're not yourself when you're out there you know you're somebody else but it's it's all part of the fun You know the part that I love the, when he's coming out mm. and the music is going. Yeah, that's to, brilliant. Yeah. I love that part, and yeah. then you see him there up on the stage. Mm. It's a real Elvis. <laughs> Let's go. 
You want to say, well, I'm going away, baby. And I won't be back and forth. And I'm going, going, going away, baby. And I won't be back and forth. I don't think there's anybody else out there that I'd like to pay tribute to, you know. You know, the only one I really wanted to, to be like, you know. When you dress up in Elvis costumes, it's like, you know, it's like a kid dressing up as Batman or Spider-Man, you know. You become Spider-Man, so you become Elvis when you're out there on the, on the, on the stage. And we can build our dreams I don't see myself doing it for much longer than maybe two, three, maybe four years max, I'd say, you know. The older you're getting, you know, the less you can do. <laughs> Especially when it comes to working out on stage, because you do sweat like when you're on stage, you know. It's mad, isn't it? Uh, I'm just mad. You can hear my voice is gone now already. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis is leaving the building, but before he leaves, anyone who wants photographs, please come up to stage and Lee will be happy to oblige. Thank you.